Hello YouTube, welcome back to another video, and in today's video we're going to be doing a what if, being the thumb, what if, the, the thumbnail of the what if is right here, this is going to be a universal intro from now on, so yeah, I'm sorry about that, until I can get more time, because I do have school, summer school at least, I won't be able to post any really good intros, so this is going to be an intro for a while. So, hope to see you later. Join the Discord server, link in the description, and let's get in to the what if. Obviously, guys, this is part four. I'm actually filming this ahead of when I normally film my what is. And this film being currently filmed at seven o'clock, rather than it being filmed at like eight, nine, something. I should start filming them the nights before so I could get them done. But I'd rather film them the day of and then get get as much sleep and film them the day of rather than get, not get enough sleep and bam. Because I also have to edit the videos and everything. But that's beside the point, even though much doesn't go into editing. Now, um, basically, the water starts off with them in the, I believe, if we were left off in the training camp, going into the training camp park, into the Camino Ward incident. So, um, obviously, and, um, every, after taking a good trip to the mall, which there is no, um, uh, incident with Shigaraki, and I'm going to go over that shortly after I get to them getting on the bus and on their way there. So, there's no incident in the mall, so everyone's shopping goes normal. Deku gets him some more clothes, which is really just a red hood. His um, normal, he just gets more copies of the red hoodie, yellow shirt, yellow shirt, red hoodie, and then the um, jeans and shoes that Billy Batson normally wears. Deku wears that a lot more often. So, while wearing this, Deku would then be approached by someone. This being his parents. As Deku, and when Deku notices them, Deku tells um, Kami to wait for him so um, that he'll meet up with her later and walks over to his parents before asking them what do they want. Because they tell Deku that they want him to come back home. Deku would obviously say no, but he would then ask them, why exactly do you guys want me to come back? As they look at Deku, you know, angry, anger in their voice, obviously. They said, because you have a quirk that you've been hiding from us this whole time. You would have never left if we would have known you had a quirk. As Deku says, hmm, so you think I have a quirk? That's pretty funny. As Deku says, you know what, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. And if you keep this secret, I'll think about coming back. And he says, no, you're going to come. As Deku says, well then, I guess I won't be coming back. They say fine, and is, is and if it's the chance for Izuku to come back and for their rankings to go to for their popularity of themselves to go up, they're going to keep this secret. As Deku says, Lee Zen says, I didn't get this power from a quirk. This power is that of magic. You don't believe me? Says mother, Did I ever tell you about the man who I gave, who gave me this power? I believe I said it was on Deku's mother's side. I, it might have been his father, but anyway. You know, his uh, last name is Midori, so it would be on his father's side, actually. It's his father. Do you remember, do you know, did I tell you where I got this power from and who gave it to me? Is it like, oh my, you could, you could say there's been 14 people to hold this power before, but they all, most of them died out but, but, um, during before the age of quirks. But this one person, one man that I met, Billy Batson, as, um, you know, he's actually will recognize this as the legendary hero and his family that everybody thought was, you know, one of the first people to actually develop a quirk. As he thinks about it, Deku's quirk is exactly like that, and it was said that Billy's quirk was magical in a sense. Now, <clears throat> I did have to stop the recording, but anyway, now Inko would say, stop lying, Izuku. There's nothing, as Izashi would say, be quiet. He's telling the truth. I can feel it. It's not a quirk, which means it's not passed down. 
We'll keep this secret. For now. But when, if your sister has ever has children, you will pass on this power to them. Seka says, yeah, yeah, whatever. As Deku and continues on with the, sh with the shopping spree, I know it says goes much more normal. They all head to UA. And upon reaching there, Azel would then tell the class that they are ready. They will all get on the bus and head their way. And get on the way there. Now, this is where I'm going to go on a time skip to actually... <clears throat> to why Shigaraki exactly won't be at the mall. Now, in this what if Shigaraki and them would have actually learned about UA going on a field trip, but with no students obviously being teenagers would want to go to the mall to buy things. And knowing Gizuku will most likely hang out with those teenagers, you know, Shigaraki won't go to try and take Izuku down. This is when All for One appear on the TV screen telling Shigaraki no. He says that Izuku has something that he hasn't seen in over a two I believe his actually I mean not his actually one for all is two hundred years old if I'm not mistaken. So he will say that he uh, this is the power of someone that he has not seen in over what since he became first became known as a villain. Anyways, he would say that the person had a, a, not a quirk, but power of magic. And he had actually defeated his Ashi and told him the secret behind his power. He told him that only magic can hurt magic. And he says that, his Ashi would say that after he had gotten escaped prison later on that year, he had went on an excursion and would have found magical pro things about magic and would have learned magic. We would have also learned that magic comes from something called the Rock of Eternity. Which he presumed is where Shazam mostly um, stayed at. Since he had never seen him. And after that he had never seen him again. But had steadily came, had steadily prepared magic. Had steadily become stronger in magic. While his magic isn't necessarily strong. But when he, in, uh, when he, integrate, when he introduces it with his quirk. He himself beca can become strong as if his quirks were magical itself. But he never did fight him again. He says he thought he died, but he still kept up his training in magic. But for some reason, his magic would never go stronger, as if something was blocking it from growing stronger. Being Shazam, keeping his um one for all from getting stronger from the magic, from magic and things like that. So, this is why, um, he will tell Shigaraki to stay away from him. What he has for Izuku would take months to prepare. Uh, Shigaraki would not. He, he'll he'll listen this time, Master. Only because of this is a power that not even Quirk can defeat. As Shigaraki would you know be a little not a little it would be down because not for for, uh, for not being able to destroy the person that ruined his plans twice. No, not twice, more or less, but he kind of, his, um, well, actually he did twice. He, with the Stain incident, he was supposed to get some publicity off of it, especially with the Nomu attacks. Stain and, well, mostly Dick Shazam had taken all, all of the, um, all of the fame from that event. So it kind of did, he ruined Sugar Rock's plans twice, in a sense. Yeah, I really like Kool-Aid Jammers. Anyways, um, so yeah, that is why exactly why Shigaraki will be there. I'm sorry, moving on. Now, um, once Deku, um, and his team, and his teammates would arrive at a place, a stop where everyone would rush off thinking that this was a rest stop or something, they will see that they're on a hill and there's like this little look, a part where they can look off the side of the hill that's that with railing and everything as everyone goes on a dirt path but Izuku feels something suspicious so unbeknownst to Aizawa who Deku was currently behind um who Deku was actually behind the bus 
watching it, he grabs Cameron too. Obviously, for obvious reasons. We all know those reasons. Deku will grab Cammy and would basically hide behind the bus together. As they see the um the Wild Wild Pussycats introduce themselves and everything, and he would then see what he felt his suspicions of. Which one? I believe it was it Pixie Bob. Was it was it Mandalay? Was it Pixie Bob? No, it wasn't Mandalay. I believe it was. Ah, it was Pixie Bob. So Pixie Bob would use her quirk, and would cause all the one A students to fall to the ground. As I saw. We'll say, alright, now, well, let's go ahead and head to the camp. And when walking towards the bus, this is when I always say, Midoriya, Cammy, what are you two doing here? I, I'm sorry, I just, I don't know, I can't pronounce her name correctly. Her last name, at least. I mean, I'll try eventually, but now nah, I just, I just don't feel right trying to pronounce her name and butchering it completely. So... You say, what are you two doing here? As Deku says, I'm not going down there. As Kami says, yeah, me neither. As he says, Midori, I know no matter what I do, you won't go down there. And I've noticed you two, so I know that no matter what I do, I can't make her go down there. Because then I'll have to force you to go down there, which I know that won't happen. Fly down to the camp and meet us there. Zeku and I before um, jumping out the um my pussy cats are watching us wondering what exactly he doing is Deku says Shazam as they see the lighty boys they didn't recognize this kid as the kid who took down Stain. As Deku grabs Cammy and flies off towards the camp, eventually meeting the teachers down there as they wait the entire time. Anyways, I'm sorry about that. I was playing with the um, rapper. Anyways, um, what do I want to happen now? Okay, upon everybody reaching down, Deku actually and Kenny will sit down there and would actually wait for the entire class, getting in a pretty decent nap until the entire class arrives and later and will be introduced and will be introduced to their training schedule with their sleeping quarters and everything before eating with everyone. Now, Deku would immediately notice one person missing, the person that he had actually saw earlier but never questioned about, the little kid. As Deku sees the little kid walking off, as Deku grabs a plate of food before, of food before then walking, well, before walking after the kid. He's still in his exam form, so he could easily fly to find Koda or anything, if need be. So Deku would um, follow Koda before then meeting him at before um, going up to Koda's little hiding spot on the side of that cliff. And while there, Deku would then ask Koda, "What is it? Um, why is it that he doesn't want to? You know, why is it that he doesn't want to? <clears throat> um, how exactly does it feel like he doesn't like heroes? Actually, I'm gonna have him ask him that." As Koda says, because heroes are selfish. They never think about their families, but they think about other people over them. As Deku says, I kind of know what you mean, but I don't at the same time. And Deku says, well, let me explain to you my story. As Deku will begin to explain about how his, he would then tell Koda that his parents, he was diagnosed as quirkless when he was young, but he would pass, he's going to tell Koda that this is obviously his quirk. And his parents had chosen his sister over him and started to basically neglect him and even sometimes abuse him. And over time, he had got tired of it and ran off before his quirk would have eventually awakened. And it wasn't until now that his parents started to care. They, pre they wanted their daughter and their children to be seen as a hero, but never wanted their son, their quirkless son, to be... Basically, they basically never wanted their quirkless son to be known by the public because it would hurt their image. But they wanted to take, um, have their daughter basically become the perfect hero so that they would even raise their image even more, even after they're no longer heroes. That they basically stopped caring for Deku. So, obviously. 
um, God will be taken aback by this. As he would decide to share his story with Deku. De he says that his parents are the water hose heroes, and they died due to a villain attack by a villain named Muscular. That the villain had killed them. As if he says, and you says, you're saying that your parents are selfish because they wanted to save other people's lives? I don't understand that, and I don't think I ever will. But everyone has their own opinions on why heroes do things. So I'll let you keep yours. Ezekiel says, well, if you ever want to eat, there's some food right there. As he flies away back towards the camp. And then the next day, Class 1B would eventually join them in their training with Deku doing, not actually doing strength training with, <clears throat> oh man, what was his name? Tiger Man, um, Tiger Dude. It was Tiger, I think. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Um, yeah, it was Tiger. The dude, um, the man, Tiger. Now, everybody else, Deku would actually not do strip training with him. I don't know why. Well, I actually do know why. It's because of the fact that Deku's strength exceeds Tiger, and Tiger doesn't know how to really strength increase Deku's strength. But because Deku's basically in his peak form, this is as strong as he's going to get for an hour. For the story, at least for now. So he actually wouldn't know how to improve upon Deku's quirk. But Deku would actually go and would actually go and do some target practice, learning to control his speed a lot better, learning to control his his lightning abilities, would control his flight better. He would learn all these things. And later that night, everybody. I believe it was on the same night, but I'm going to make it to where it's on the same night. Everybody will be cooking, and Deku will notice Cody is gone again before bringing him some more food. And while on the um, and Deku would arrive to give Cody the food. And Cody would say thanks as Deku decides to sit with Cody. As Cody asks, "Are you going to leave now?" And Deku says, "No. I feel like you could use the company." But Deku would then hear something. Deku still in his sedan for since he hasn't transformed out of it. Deku's, as we're gonna see, Deku would have a at least a little bit more enhanced hearing, especially being in the more of an adult variation of his form. So Deku, you know, hearing something coming. What I asked Koto, what exactly is that? As Koto says, he might be one of Pixie. Um, I believe it was Pixie Bob's. Uh, monsters, or I believe it was Pixie Bob. It would be one of Pixie Bob's monsters, maybe. That she's probably somebody's probably still out training against them. And Deku says, "No, everyone's there." When they then see a man, is about to punch them both. As Deku pushes Code out of the way, taking the punch, it sends him kind of into the um into the rocks behind him. As he didn't didn't have a center of gravity, it wasn't braced for the punching time. As muscular say, ah. You took the punch. I was aiming for the kid. But you'll do just fine. As he sees Deku get up, he says, Oh, what is this? Says, I, I remember you. He said to not fight you, but I'll fight you anyway. You don't seem that strong. As he throws a punch at Deku, only for Deku to slap the punch away. Deku delivers the punch directly to Muscular's side, causing Muscular to drop to his knees. As Muscular say, Oh, yeah. As muscles began to come from his arm and began to build up to a much bigger proportion to what they were originally, as he delivers a punch to Deku, only for him to only for the dust to clear and to see Deku's hand caught his fist. As Deku moves it away, before then delivering a punch, sending muscular off the cliff, away from Koda. As Deku tells Koda to get to the um, get to the training camp now, as he sees Koda is in fear, he asks Koda, "What is it?" As he says, "He's the one that." Killed his parents. It's like, it's I don't have time for this. As he grabs Koda before we then speeding off towards the camp, before speeding back towards the mountain, in time to see Muscular jump back on top of the mountain. He says, some punch. Now I have to become serious. As he takes off his fake eye, fake eye, put it in the eye that he take, puts it in when he's serious. As Muscular begins to throw punches at Deku, only for Deku to basically not be that affected by them as he would have normally been if he was in his base form. As Deku 
with the indecision. You know, you're pretty weak for someone who's supposed to have super strength. This is true super strength. As that who punches muscular into the sky, before then grab, flying up, grabbing him by his legs, flying up into space for a little bit. We do not. I believe since Adam can't breathe in space, maybe he can. I'm not sure. It didn't really research that part of his abilities. So he will immediately begin to fly down as fast as he can with muscular behind. Before using that momentum to swing muscular into the um into the cliff or the mountain side. Incapacitated as he taking muscular out of the fight probably for the next couple months, maybe weeks actually, with the damage and then uh, along with him going to space. As Deku will fly off to help the rest of his team, uh, the rest of his classmates, and, uh, well, his comrades. Deku's taking on many people, including Toga, which Toga tried to stab him. She would notice that he's not, he literally can't stab him. So, obviously, Deku, you know, will take down Toga pretty easily when Toga then begins to melt away. But Deku's fight with Toga actually took longer than normal because. Basically, Deku just sat there while she was just constantly stabbing him. With multiple blades, which he doesn't know where she stored all these blades, but she just got multiple blades somehow. But by the time De um, Deku would have taken down Toga, the other villains would have escaped. And Deku would have learned of, not uh, of Bakugo, actually Bakugo being taken. And this one, it was only Bakugo that was taken. This would make Deku wonder. How did the villains find out where they were going? As Deku would then begin to wonder. He says there must be somebody who's telling them where they're going. Because the villains have constantly been attacking 1A. And he doesn't know why. There's somebody in a 1A that's giving up secrets. As they could all, then pumping up the rest of the teachers, they could then learn that Izumi also went with the villains. As Deku then says, What? As they say, Deku, that's not the only thing. She went willingly. As if she was with them the whole time. As Deku says, it makes sense, but how did they find the camp? Not even we knew where it was at. Unless they had a tracker on her somehow. As this would end, the you know, as the teachers would actually take um, as I once this actually happens and everything cools down, the teacher um, as I would gather up the class, every actually everybody, and would take them back home where everybody would be at home. Well, they would be back on a rock of eternity, and some students in the hospital. When Deku would visit the hospital, he would hear overhear the group that would have normally consisted of him but instead of it being him there's Katsumi because they in a place since Bakugo is her brother he would then hear about them going to rescue Bakugo and to get some answers from Izumi as Deku would decide that he's going to watch over the school to make sure nothing happens so when it comes time for the raid and um, everything Deku would actually be watching over them when he sees them about to help uh, getting Bakugo out Deku and seeing All Might dropping into his weakened form. As All Might says. As he sees his sister right beside All for One. As Deku says. Sister, I can't believe you did this. As Izumi and All for One looks up to only to see Deku in his champion form folding down. Ah, Shazam. It's been years since I've seen you. Although you do look a little different. Well, should I say hundreds of years? As Izumi says, what? That's my brother. So for one says, so, you're not Shazam, not the one that I fought, at least. Deku says, you fought Shazam before? Yeah, he looked just like you. For some reason, but you look different, really. In some ways, you look different. As Deku says, he fought Billy? When did this happen? As Deku <clears throat> begins to wonder, as all for one then tells 
and then tells Izumi to distract him as long as possible so that he can fight All Might. As Izumi begins the charge of Worm for All, only for the quirk to not be working. He uses his past uses of Worm for All, even until she knows spirit was just slowly manifesting itself, itself within there, or holding back Izumi from using the quirk. He's holding them back from as much as possible. So Izumi would be fighting Deku, as Deku's just blocking her attacks, which seem to be basically powerless, well, which are literally powerless against Deku, seeing as how she's not putting any strength in him. Not that one for all would do anything to get Deku anyways. Deku says, why, sis? He says, it's because of you. Now that you back, Mom and Dad have been acting weird as if they want, as if you mean everything to them now. They don't favor me anymore, especially with your popularity at the fighting stain, even though I fought him too. As Deku says, well, mom and dad don't want me at the house now, but you've made your choice. You're a villain. And my job is to take out villains. It's so up for one is who is take, being about to be taken up on all my seas. Deku about to um, basically attack Izumi and put her down, seeing her not, be, not the normal green flicker of lightning that she uses with one for all, all for one would um, decide that now might not be the time for this final fight against All Might. But it may not be the time to win this fight. He needs to retreat with Izumi, and that he does. Ending off the Kamino Award incident. Now, I didn't go much into it because Deku didn't really join them in much of it. He only watched over them. Deku only joined in when he saw All Might on his last legs about to basically be defeated by the villain. As Deku would land before then grabbing his uncle Toshinori before asking him if he's okay. As he says, I should have gave you one for all. Deku says, I think there's something wrong with one for all. As All Might says, yeah. As All Might feels a rush of power. It's as if one for all is re coming back to him slowly. This Deku says, Uncle Toshinori, why is you why are you growing stronger? He says, I don't know. And Deku says, I fear I think I have a reason why. Well, I As um, you know um Deku's Tells um, that he thinks one for all is working. Um, all for one is trying. No, one for all is trying to work against um Izumi, the previous users at least. He says when Izumi started to fight him, it was like she wasn't having. She didn't have access to one for all. He was just throwing normal punches at him. As Deku, as All Might would say. Hmm. I think you may be right, young Midoriya. But I fear that this is not the last battle. But this is certainly my last battle. But I believe you may take up the mantle as a symbol of peace. As Deku says, thank you, Uncle Toshinori. Before then, walking away. With Toshinori taking him to a hospital. This is where we'll end off part four. It wasn't much of a what if, but I had to get through this part. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the what if. Join the Discord, link in the description. I'll see you guys later. Shukaye, out.